All right, any questions? What made you decide in the first place that there was a book to be made called The Perfect Shot? Yeah, quite an interesting story. I was the only veterinarian that was also working towards my professional hunter's license in Zimbabwe. And the Zimbabwe Professional Hunters and Guides Association used to have a training camp in the Rifa Safari area, which was an hour and a half from our ranch. So I got involved with them and on, as one of their training officers. And what we would do, we, the first time we ever did it, we went down to the Zambezi Valley with a bunch of students and we actually hunted an elephant. We shot an elephant cow and then I dissected it. So the elephant cow was lying on its side, we skinned it. And then we took the front leg off the carcass and I got some of the, the learner PHs to remove all the meat from the bones. Then we took out the, 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 the uppermost rib cage and we took out the uppermost lung. So they could see the heart, you could see the diaphragm, you could see the aorta. And then we put that front leg back on the elephant. So the elephant was basically cut in half, lengthways in half. Put the front leg back on the elephant and we managed to get a safari car right up to it. So everybody stood on the back and stood on the, on the railings and the seats and they looked down. So okay, now when an elephant walks, this is how it's done. This is where the leg is forward, this is where, look where the heart is in the relation to the, to the diaphragm. When the leg is back, look how the, the humerus bone covers the heart. And, and the chief training officer for the Zimbabwe Press Hunt Association was a guy by the name of Lionel Reynolds. And he said to me, no, Kevin, nobody's ever done this before. So then I did a buffalo and then I did a, an impala. And then that was, just, that was it. And I thought, no, there was, a, there was a real need for it because a lot of people just don't know where to shoot an animal properly. I mean, the, where's the heart in a giraffe? Where's the heart in a rhino? Where's the crocodile's brain? How do you shoot a crocodile? So that started the seed and then it flew from there. And I, I worked for four hours a day for four years to put the perfect shot together. Thicker? Because they have to work harder. If you do lots of push-ups, eventually you're going to get very strong like me. Eh? <laughs> okay, and that is why we've got those muscles, the harder a muscle has to work, the bigger it gets. So this ventricle now, the left ventricle, pumps the blood all the way from the tip of the My nose. neighbor was my fishing partner. We used to go, we love fishing together. And his wife was an artist. So I said to her, come on, let's do this. And it was in Kath's, my wife's idea that said, instead of just drawing them, why don't we use photographs? So this stimulated my uh, wife's interest in photography. So we, we started systematically collecting photographs of all the animals that occurred in our area. The animals had to be exactly side on at almost postcard quality. And then we systematically painted the anatomy by hand on the, on, on the photograph. So I would sit with the, the, the artist and say, okay, that's the point of the shoulder, there's the elbow joint, that's where the scapula is. And then she would get her diagram of a scapula of a water buck, for example, and then she'd have to fit it into that. And then we use a paint called gouache. Gouache is a, a paint that you can paint on photographs. And then she would paint it through and I said, okay, I'll, oh. the first photograph she took, took us three weeks to do. At the end of it, she was doing three photographs a day. Also, then we figured out the term, the vital triangle, because if you take an animal's bottom end of its scapula, you take its shoulder joint and you take its elbow joint. You join those three together, it's known as the vital triangle. And why it is it the vital triangle? Because the top of the heart and the center of the lungs are in exactly that center of that triangle. And everybody thinks you shoot an animal in the heart. You don't shoot an animal in the heart. You shoot an animal above the heart. Because above the heart you get, there's a spaghetti junction of major blood vessels. You get the aorta that's coming out, that's going to the rest of the body. You get the pulmonary artery that's going to the lungs. You get the pulmonary vein, you get the superior and anterior vena cava. They all together, they're coming together and they sort of twist around the top of the heart. And if you can put an expanding type bullet through that sweet spot, as we call it, that animal is dead within a couple of minutes. And I've got friends now that have used that shot and they've got one of them is 41 buffaloes with one shot. 41 consecutive one shot kills. Go! Go! Perfect shot came out in 1999. It was an instant success. I was at the Dallas Safari Show for the, con for the convention when the book was launched. And Safari Press sold more books the first day than they'd sold in the entire convention ever. I'm just my one book. I used to use a fountain pen to sign the book and I had to fill my fountain pen three times in one day. I just, there was just queues of people 50 meters long signing. It was, a, it was a runaway success. Then we thought the idea about bringing out a pocket version, so we brought out the mini version and that was even a greater success because it's just been everywhere. Every safari camp has got them. They always get stolen because the clients steal them, so which, is, <laughs> which is wonderful because it's good for business. 
And uh, yeah, it was a well, thank God I wrote the perfect shot because my life in Zimbabwe turned upside down in 2002 when uh, I was a farmer and like all the other farmers or ranchers in Zimbabwe, we were forcefully removed off our land. We just had to get up and go, leave everything behind. We weren't compensated. And we went there. not only that, we had to pay our labor out a vast amount of money to be able to leave the farm. I had to pay my labor. You had to pay them two months' salary for every year that they worked for you. And I had 65 people that had worked, some of them worked for me for 22 years. It's about a million US dollars. And all of a sudden, I was in my early 40s and suddenly a penniless person. But thank God, and it was the perfect shot that basically saved me because I was managed to put uh, my kids through to 11 years of university, all from the perfect shot. So then we decided, no, well, maybe I was in South Africa and I had opportunities to do some of the, hunt some of the other species that, I, that weren't covered in the Perfect Shot. In the, so I said, well, let's do a revised edition. So we brought out Perfect Shot 2, and that has also now come out in a new mini edition as well. So the book's still for sale, still selling well, even though hunting's coming a bit under pressure through international uh, pressure from the anti-hunters. At the end of the day, I've been accused of being a, a veterinarian that teaches people to kill animals, and that has been a bit of a stinging comment, but I'm a firm believer that the sustainable utilization of Africa's wildlife is, is its only savior. We've got to hunt these animals because the, that gives them value. We don't hunt them all, we're very selective now, we only hunt animals at a post-breeding age. But the funds generated from that hunting goes to preserve the environment and it preserves the animals that are in that environment. So if, if it, I believe hunting is a necessary part of conservation, and my job as a veterinarian is that if you're going to hunt an animal, then do it in the most humane way possible. And the book Perfect Shot is basically designed, or basically written to teach people how to hunt animals in the most ethical, in the most humane way. Shoot an animal through the top of its heart, there's immediate loss of blood pressure, the animal is unconscious within a couple of seconds, and is clinically brain dead within a minute or two. So, well, I like to think that my book has stimulated an interest in hunting, it has helped many animals to be killed cleanly and ethically, but the greater good is that the funds generated from the hunting of these animals has gone for the, the greater conservation cause, and that is my message.